Hello YouTube and welcome back to the FIFA 17 Sunderland Guru Mode. This is episode 44 here today and we get it off starting off with a game against Manchester United at home at the Stadium of Light. So in this game you will see that we are starting by showing the starting lineups again. As you can see Man United had signed um, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang so he will be hard to play against. But actually, I think I checked his stats after this game, and he hadn't played very much for them this season for some reason. But anyway, there is the team that we're going with, 4-4-2 once again. Um, and Lauren up front again, and hopefully them two can get the job done against Manchester United here today. And we can get something out of this game if we are looking. But this is the United team, and they have a pretty good side with Aubameyang up front, Modern behind him, and some pretty good players. But um, Schneidlin, I did, be I believe that was, and Fosu Mensa in CDM, two pretty decent players on career mode, so they should be all right for Manchester United. So anyway, you can see I was trying to dribble out a defense, and Luke Shaw wins it back for United. <laughs> And they're just trying to get through. Aubameyang is tackled, though. Servi tries to bring it forward. He gives it to Pharrell. Pharrell into Gray. Gray to um, Lauren. Lauren tried the ball back to Gray, but Gray didn't make the right run. And United were able to get the ball back. Schneidlin, you can see, makes a great through ball there. Putting Aubameyang through on goal into the top left corner. Really good goal for Manchester United. Great ball through by Schneiderlin. My defense was sleeping. And it was a really good finish by Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to put it into the top right corner. Well, top left corner for him, top right for the goalkeeper. To make it 1-0 to United, we had a chance there. It ended up going straight into the keeper's hands, but we do win it back with De Costa there. We give it in to Kyle Lauren. Lauren out to Barini. Barini has the pass back to Lauren. Lauren sees Servi. Servi sees the run of Declan John out on the left. John then whips it in towards Kyle Lauren has it taken off him by Smalling and um, Chia wins it back gives it to Barini Barini to Blin into Pharrell back heel to Corcia Corcia with the strike off the par so unlucky for um, Sebastian Corcia to not give us an equalizing goal right there and as you can see here we get back into the game about 10 minutes into the second half just hoping to try and get back into this game and hope that we can actually get something out of it <laughs> So anyway, Schneidlin picks it up here, gives it into Shaw. Shaw against Pharrell does pretty well and beats Courtier as well. Aubameyang picks the ball up, has a strike, but it's saved by Domitru. It's pretty much straight at him, but it's a corner for Manchester United, and they have the chance to double their lead from it. So Aubameyang tries to control it. He forces it to Smalling. Smalling to Fosu Mensa. Aubameyang has a strike, a really good save by Domitru once again. <laughs> keep the game at 1-0. So anyway, you can see from the resulting corner from that, they whip it in again. It falls, um, Pharrell passes it out to Barini, out to Servi. Servi sees the run, but um, Korshia heads it down to Barini. Barini takes too long to get the ball. Aubameyang eventually gets it, has a strike, and once again, it is saved by Dumitru. So Dumitru being the difference here between us and a lot more goals for United. So anyway, the corner once again comes in. Pharrell can then try and get it out, but they intercept it again. Shaw gives it to Fosu Mensa, Masa, to Shaw, into Aubameyang, back to Shaw. Really good chance again for Manchester United. And for the fourth time, Dimitri forces it out for a corner. From this corner, though, Manchester United whip it in again. The Qatarian heads it on. Delofeo with the volley, and it's in. This time, Dimitri can be the hero and Manchester United make it 2-0. You will see here that the um, ball fell to Delufeo and he hit it straight through the legs of Declan John on the line, who I thought should have done a lot better with that. Considering it was pretty much straight at him, it um, dropped just between his legs. Any higher he would have gotten very hurt, actually. But unlucky for us, he was not able to close his legs fast enough and block the ball. So we get the header away as they try to whip it in, and we play it down the line to Kyle Lauren. Lauren has the run, but Smalling um, wins it back from him into Bailly. He tr gives it away eventually, though, to Blin. Blin through to Andre Gray. Gray through on goal, has the strike, and it's hit the post. So twice we've hit the woodwork in this game. We've gotten really unlucky that we are still 2-0 down, although we did do well to hang on to 1-0. We um, cross in a corner when the goalkeeper stayed forward. Fosu Mensa gets it out, though. De Costa picks it up here, passes it into to Domitru. Domitru then looks for a pass, no many people making space around him, I have to pass it back eventually. It ends up going all the way back to Domitru who made his way to the halfway line. We do get it forward though again, Barini in toward, Ward back 
well, tries to give it back to Barini, but it's intercepted, and Manchester United can just bring the ball away. Aubameyang gives it back to Darmian, and that is how that game finishes. A, a very, well, a quite disappointing 2-0 defeat for us here at home to Manchester United. It would have been nice to get a point, but Manchester United are a good team, so they did well. And we get in here in this um, second game of this episode, which is away against Southampton in the FA Cup fifth round, I do believe, after we won against Rotherham in the fourth round in the last episode. There's the Southampton side, Manone, our former player who we got from swapping. Um, the Polish keeper is on the bench for them, while Sale Uchan, the player we sold to them in the summer, is in the starting lineup and hoping to do well against his former team. Mbakani, who we had in the whole series, he starts up front for them, so he, they must have signed him from Hull, because I do believe even though he's on loan, um, because his parent club aren't in the game, he is automatically set as a permanent Hull player. So here is our side. That goalkeeper, I cannot pronounce, he is starting in the M team. And as you can see, Cameron Ward and Joel Osoro starting up front, as well as Danny Barrera starting in midfield. Quite a few youngsters in this side, Federico Fazio and Kone starting as the full M center backs, hoping to get the job done in this game. Rico Henry also getting a start at left back. So anyway, we come forward here with Adam Matthews into Joel Osoro, but he gives the ball away. Sali Uchan with the interception. Makani brings it forward here. Um, looks for a pass, gives it in to Kovalenko, who I do believe plays for Manchester City. I'm not too sure about that, though. Um, Romeo gives it in to Klasi. I do believe they do have a player that, that... It is given in to Mbakani, though, and what a strike that was. By Mbakani, first time on his weak foot. Great strike from him. Great passing play from um, Southampton. Kovalenko played it into to Mbakani. First time curled it into the far corner great goal for Southampton to score there so we're trying to get back into this game just before halftime Walter Mathis gives it into Asoro Asoro tries to beat his man but it is tackled they get it away for a throw in to us though and Matthews can just throw this in as we try and get something before the halftime whistle goes so Mathis pulls it back to Andre Teo Teo into Barrera Barrera into Ward he runs down the right hand side, gives it to Matthews, he whips it in, the first cross is blocked, he has another chance, whips it in, Danny Barrera with the chance and it's straight at McCarthy, one of our best chances. We did have another chance earlier in the game but I did not include that. But anyway, they whip in a corner, it deflects off the player they had short and it goes into the hands of our goalkeeper so we can now try and counter attack but we lose the ball with our player there in Soro I do believe but they win it back they get it with Kovalenko here he gives it into Sali Uchan he gives it to Klasi into Kovalenko back to Uchan back to Klasi and they're just playing some good football here Southampton they give it into Austin it's a poor touch by, by our player to let the Austin pass him easily he gives it into Kovalenko who finesses it round the goalkeeper to make it 2-0 and that's another disappointing goal to give away. You can just see poor defending by Kone. And actually it wasn't a finesse. It was just a smashing goal by Kovalenko. So anyway, you can see here we advance into March the 1st of 2019 and there is a training injury. Sergi Gomez will be out for the next two months so he will be just coming back right at the end of the season so that's disappointing from him and as you can see we're getting rid of a few of the young players in the youth academy that I do not believe are good enough. So they'll be coming in just seeing how they last and um, well not coming in I mean leaving the club if I do not think they're good enough so three players being left in and be also because it is the start of the month there will be a squad report so dummy true gone up nicely so far up by seven and he is the most improved player I do believe and um, some of the older players aren't actually decreasing that much just a little bit Declan John up to a 77 now so he is improving well as is um, Walter Mathis up by six Larson's going down pretty bad though and he hasn't played as much as I thought he would when I brought him back after he did really well in the first season so Kyle Larson already up to a 79 the same as Andre Gray so looking good at the young players in this squad and anyway we advance on to the second because that is the date the youth squad report comes back and you will see that we do sign a couple of players up from um, Japan here a couple of them look good and um, once again two of the three look good in Nigeria so we call them up as well and from England there's quite a few players in there I signed up the first third and th fifth <laughs> so three players coming in from England as well so a good set of seven players coming into the youth academy hopefully will do well for the future of the club even if I'm not here past the next season 
So anyway, you can see we get into the third and final game of this episode, which is away at the KCOM to Hull City, a side that Sunderland beat in real life the other, um, well, about, well, less than a week ago. Not that that game mattered much, because obviously Sunderland had been relegated in real life. And you could, um, the result against Hull was pretty useless, so it didn't mean much, is all I'm trying to say. So there's the Hull side, David Myler as the captain for them, the former Sunderland player. Robert Snodgrass on the bench, despite him not being a Hull player in real life anymore. So anyway, here is our team, Catermol into the starting lineup with the captain's armband, and it's a pretty average side for us by now, playing 4-4-2 as well with, I believe, the two strikers that started in the FA Cup game being two strikers on the bench. So anyway, about half an hour into this game, Hull City get a goal kick, kick it forward. Kone is able to pick it up, though. Korchia plays it into Barini. Barini back into Kadermol. He found John. John played it over the top to Servi. Servi has the ball. He heads it back across to Gray. Gray beats his man, has a strike. It's a good save by Matheus which I believe is the name of their goalkeeper and their player has to just force it out for a corner from the resulting corner we can whip it in with Servi a great header by Kone goes just over the bar which is unlucky for him it was a little bit lower it would have been 1-0 and it would have been a brilliant header right from the corner so as you can see we're trying to come forward here in the last 10 minutes not much happened in this game Andre Gray picks it up Plays it into Cameron Ward. Ward sees the run of Barini. Plays it through to him. Barini through on goal. Has a strike into the bottom left-hand corner. Great goal from Fabio Barini into the bottom left to make it 1-0 to Sunderland with about 10 minutes left in the game. Great goal by Barini. And he makes it 1-0 in a much-needed win after losing two games in a row in all competitions. So really good finish by Barini. And as you can see, we're into the three minutes of added time, which hopefully we will be able to deal with in this game and not allow Hull back into it as this will be, as you will see, as we play it forward. Servi has a chance to go through, has it down this left-hand side. I then decided to try and pull it back. Actually, I whipped it in. It was headed. Cameron Ward picks the ball up, has a strike straight into the hands of Matheus, and that is how that game is going to end as the final whistle has just gone. So Abel Hernandez getting the final touch. So a winner from Barini, really good for us to get out of this game with the win. <laughs> And as you will see, that is how this episode is going to finish. If you did enjoy this episode, please do leave a like as that would be much appreciated. Thank you for watching anyway. If you enjoyed the video or want, and want to see any more of this career mode or any of the Ultimate Team Road to Glory series, it would be amazing if you would subscribe. It would be much appreciated. But I just want to say once again, thank you for watching. See you later. With 43 points, but only behind on goal difference. In sixth, Stoke City with 43 points, but only behind on goal difference. In seventh, rising up the table are Everton with 40 points. In eighth, moving down are...